Welcome to the Stereoscopic Society's annual exhibition for 2021. Digital images were entered in six individual categories. These will be shown interspersed with sets of images from each of the selectors and also entries in the common theme category. Because of the pandemic, no traditional slide and print entries were accepted this year. The first category is digital, people, pets and domestic animals. This attracted 38 images from 25 entrants. We start with Roger Clements, who has captured this rural scene at a country show. It is entitled Oxcart Drive. Bungee Fun is Carl Bromage's title for this picture. Mike Hilliard calls this image Family Tree Hug. It was taken on a family walk in Gobian's Wood near Potter's Bar. This picture of Navajo children, taken at Monument Valley, is by Lee Pratt. This image of a rather beautiful stone arch is by George Collin. He calls it the Happy Wanderer. Feeding time is by Colin Metherill. Keeping the flies off is by David Robinson. This feline image, entitled Shy Puss, is by David Ford. This shot of a carnival float was taken by Reg Self. He calls his image Local Event. A sunny afternoon at Stratford Bowling Club. Ian Hasty asks, which one did you say is mine? Street Artist is by Ian Rawat. Greg Foster shows us a hug for Grandma. Kid in the Village is by Eddie Kwok. Neil Bailey shows us the Coco Club. This is all about evenings of glamour and dancing to live music of the 1930s. Artist at his studio is by Denis Alishev. Local barber, a dying trade, was photographed by Ian Hasty before this barber finally closed his shop for good. This disturbing portrait by David Kuntz is called Shattered. Jeff Ogram calls this picture Tame Deer. The interview is by Mary Paul, and Mary says this interview took place in London at the Extinction Rebellion protest in 2019. Lorraine is John Nichols' title for this equestrian image. Ian Rawat calls this thespian image Leading Ladies. This elegantly posed portrait is called Whitby Goth, image by Carl Bromage. Mike Hilliard's granddaughter Beatrice can be a bit of a tomboy. This image is called Intrepid Explorer, Bee on a Tree. Fishmongers is John Savage's title for this view of work in a fish processing plant. Ian Rawat shows us a hiker at the top of Ben Nevis. Tour de Yorkshire is Carl Bromage's title for this picture. John Savage shows us the Jungfrau Marathon. Festival is by Carl Bromage. Great costumes spotted in Bradford. 
This image of a craftsman in his workplace, Rob Cayley calls Mason at Work. Dennis Alishev shows us cross-country skiing in Russia. That looks really great. George Themelis shows us trying to balance. Cart driver is the work of Robert Bloomberg. This very elegant and beautifully posed image is by Neil Crick. He calls it The Look. The next two images are commended and the first is Grand Finale by George Themelis. This charming portrait of Louisa May, also commended, is by Susan Pinsky. Wonderful eye contact. There were two runners-up in this category, and the first is Derek Medhurst with Chatter at Racehorse Sanctuary. The second runner-up is Neil Crick, whose title for this wonderful creation is Extreme Hair. But the winner is George Themelis with Pet Fox. This set of images is by selector Barry Aldous. The next category is Digital, Scenery, and here 45 images were entered by 23 stereographers. The first scenery image is Eskdale Train and was captured on the Ravenglask and Eskdale Railway in the Lake District by Roger Clements. This image of a tidy Swiss graveyard and village church is by Stephen O'Neill and he has wittily entitled it Dead Centre of Ottenbach. Red Canoe was taken in very early morning light at Lagan Locks on the Caledonian Canal. Photo by Mike Hilliard. David Robinson shows us a Venetian traffic jam. Santa Barbara Birds on Beach is Susan Pinsky's title for this contrajour shot. Ian Bailey shows us this window view he calls Early Morning Peace. Peter Raven has given the title Through the Round Window to this in-flight image. Photographing the Falls is Colin Metherill's title for this image. Ian Bailey calls this offshore wind farm scene, No Wind. Near Elterwater Lake District by Roy Ashcroft. Roy says, taken on the walk from Elterwater Village to Skelwith Bridge along the River Brathe. Mapped Out is the title of this alpine skyscape by Peter Raven. John Savage has captured this view of the wrought iron gates leading to Clare College Bridge, Cambridge. Clouds and Bruges Rooftops is by Dana Kubik. 
Cathy Ford gives us this fine churchyard view of St Mary the Virgin Church, Warplesdon. George Collin has photographed the Morthach estuary south of Snowdonia near Dolgethlai. Airbrushed. This is an in-flight picture captured by Peter Raven. This image of the coastal cliffs near Eastbourne, known as the Seven Sisters, is by Colin Metherill. Lookout. Of this view of one of Violet Le Duc's grotesques at Notre Dame, Keith Webb comments, he, or she, had a good view of the city. Dana Kubik calls this image Cloud Kingdom. This atmospheric study by Terry Turnber he calls Angry Sunset. David Ford gives us this fine action shot, Unexpected Snow. Paul Feynman's image shows us a view of the Glenorchy to Queenstown Road, New Zealand. Reg Self calls this scanned slide image Eagle's Nest Maritime Alps. Girish Patel shows us this Passage to Spring. Beware Unwelcome Visitors is by Reg Self. This is also a scanned slide image. This super aerial cloudscape is by Peter Raven. He calls his image Above Below. Waterfall is by Colin Metherill. This busy view of a mooring pontoon in Manaus Harbour is by John Savage. Baltic Coast Mary Paul spotted this lifeguard tower and breakwater on a coastal walk near the ISU Congress in Newbeck. Mullion Cove Harbour is by Terry Turnber. This busy canal scene is at Camden Lock on the Regent's Canal. Image by Cathy Ford. This image by Colin Metherill showing the effects of coastal erosion is entitled Precarious Living. Kevin Harvey gives us Autumn at Summerhouse Hill. The hill is just outside Folkestone. Stonehenge is by Ian Bailey. Avon Artro is George Collins' title for this delightful North West Wales river view. Cappadocian Chimneys is Jeff Ogram's title for this image. The fairy chimneys of Cappadocia are formed of tuff, a soft rock of volcanic origin subsequently eroded by wind and water. View from Mount Bonpland toward Glenorchy, New Zealand is by Paul Feyman. Jeff Ogram shows us a section of the Great Wall of China and entitles it, with feeling, as Steep Descent. George Collins' image, Cumbuchen, was taken near Bethgelert in North Wales. Roy Ashcroft shows us this view from Blake Rig in beautiful autumn light. Blake Rig is at Little Langdale in the Lake District. The next two images were commended. First, this delightful garden image by Terry Turnber. He calls it Floral River. Also commended was Paul Feynman's The Gardens of Blanket Bay. This is on the shores of Lake Wakatipu, South Island, New Zealand. The first runner-up in the scenery category is Lee Pratt, who shows us Carlsbad Caverns in New Mexico. The second runner-up 
is Blake Rigg by Roy Ashcroft. Roy says, Although I have visited Blake Rigg on several occasions, the autumn light was just about perfect on this visit. But the winner is Ian Bailey, with this atmospheric shot entitled A Cold Start on the Canal. In the common theme category, members are invited to enter a set of up to four images with brief supporting text to illustrate their theme. There were 11 entries. We start with Brian Dunster, whose theme is the Swindon Railway Museum, which covers every aspect of steam locomotive construction and railway operation. First, the start of an adventure. Note the statue of Brunel. The early days of steam is represented by this replica of George Stevenson's North Star. The great days of steam are represented by number 6000, C.B. Collett's King George V. The final picture is entitled A Complete History of Construction. Next, Mike Hilliard shows us pictures of cruising on the Caledonian Canal. The first shows the stern wash, cruising on Loch Lochy. Here we see early morning reflections of moored boats on Lagan Avenue, which is near Lagan Locks. One of the lock gates in the set of five locks at Fort Augustus seems to have sprung a leak. The waterway exploits the presence of three lochs in the Great Glen. Loch Lochy, Loch Oich and Loch Ness. Here it is dawn on Loch Ness at Urquhart Harbour. Kate Sullivan's theme is alien atmosphere and she hopes that in 3D the images will have a touch of the uncanny. The first image is a spooky campsite light on the Isle of Sheppey. This is a model of the UFO sighted by United States Air Force personnel in Rendlesham Forest back in 1980. And another picture of the UFO. The model was provided by the Forestry Commission. Finally, another alien on Sizewell Beach. Harry Atkinson shows us their kitchen work surfaces under a variety of different light sources. First is visible light. Here, starting top left and moving right, then bottom left, then bottom right, we see the effect of natural light, ultraviolet, near infrared, and lastly, all three combined. In the third image, near infrared light is used with the image displayed in black and white. Note how living plant foliage appears as bright white. Finally, we see the effects of the various light sources in an outdoor scene. This image is arranged in the same way as the second one. Roy Smith's theme is Local Brook in Full Flow. The brook is hidden from view of those who walk only a few yards away. Quiet in some places. But always flowing onward. Mary Paul's theme is Q at Christmas. Mary says, This was my first visit to Q Gardens at Christmas. There were a variety of light displays, large and small. I couldn't take it all in. There were so many different things to see. And so many people making it difficult to take stereo photos of these displays. David Ford's theme is 
The Delights of the Lake District. His first image shows daffodils above Tarn House in the Southern Lakes. The second image shows a typical wild valley. The Lake District has many rivers with attractive bridges. And finally, a high-level scene toward the Langdales, crossing many valleys. Next, Derek Medhurst, whose theme is racing at Plumpton. This high-speed sport is a challenge for the W3, but there is more than just racing to photograph. First, we have the parade ring before a race. Next, a horse cantering to the start. Some horses taking a fence in a race. And finally, spectators watching the action both live and on screen. The next four images were taken in Iceland and Brian Davis calls his theme the Ice of Iceland. The ice cap on Iceland is as large as North Yorkshire, but only has a few locations where it discharges into the sea. These are mainly at lagoons from which the ice waits for the next tide to take it to the sea. Or to leave it stranded on the black sands of the beach. Carl Bromage is the runner-up in the common theme category with his images of the North Yorkshire coast, the first being taken on the path to Robin Hood's Bay. The second is a hyperstereo of Whitby, taken using char-char very early in the morning before anybody was up. This one is a bit further up the coast, at Steith's. Back in Whitby again for another early morning cha-cha. But Neil Crick is the common theme winner with his images on the theme Notting Hill Carnival. These are four images chosen to display the variety of costumes and participants. Neil explains that he has desaturated the backgrounds as they were very busy. The monochrome backgrounds, however, still give a sense of place to the subject, enhancing the storytelling of the event. Now we have the category Digital, Buildings Inside and Out. This attracted 40 images from 25 stereographers. The first image in this category is by Roger Clements. Even the underwear is vintage in this period piece study which he calls Dry the Washing. Next, Ian Hasty hopes that there's light at the end of the tunnel. This moving walkway is at the NEC near Birmingham. Dennis Bosma calls this image from La Pedrera in Barcelona Gaudi Balcony. St Kilda Sunshine is Helen Beauville's title for this image taken near the Australian town of Port Phillip, Victoria. Kate Sullivan has called this structure encountered in Rendlesham Forest, Base Camp. Eddie Kwok shows us Kaiping Dialu. Dialu are multi-storied watchtowers of which some 1800 exist in Kaiping which is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Forest Hills, Boston is the title of this striking image from David Starkman. This is the entrance to the cemetery. John Nichols calls this mining image Into the Light. 
Corridor is Eddie Kwok's title for this image. Andrew Bloxham shows us the long view at Bolton Castle in Wensleydale, North Yorkshire. Kate Sullivan has captured this atmospheric image of Bradwell Power Station. The Steps is by Brian Davis. This black and white image is by Andy Raven and it is entitled At the Mill. Dennis Alishev has photographed this abandoned allotment. Eddie Kwok has captured Historic Building, University of Hong Kong. Hollyhocks and Doorway is by Mary Paul. Mary says, these hollyhocks were seen whilst wandering around Lübeck during the ISU Congress. Jeff Ogram shows us Big Onofrio's Fountain. This is in Dubrovnik and was built in 1438 to mark the completion of the city's water supply. Reg Self has found this modern structure to frame his picture of Palma Cathedral in Spain. Cistern Chapel, 20th century, is Derek Medhurst's title for this image. This view shows the Archer's Barracks at Bolton Castle, North Yorkshire. Image by Andrew Bloxham. This image of Sizewell Power Station is by Kate Sullivan. White Staircase, Blue Wall and Mark's Feet is Dana Kubik's name for this interesting composition. Gaudi's Fireplace photographed by Brian Davis, is to be found at the Casa Batlo in Barcelona. Rob Cayley shows us this Museum of Liverpool stairwell. Derelict. Kate Sullivan found this structure near Bradwell Power Station. She asks, any idea what it is? This strikingly decorated doorway is at a monastery in Russia. Image by Denis Alishev. Cuban Graveyard is from the camera of Brian Davis. Dana Kubik calls this striking image at the end of the colonnade. Rooftop Sunset is by Helen Beauville. Bob Taylor calls his image of a modern stair hall symmetry. Greg Foster gives us this architectural shot entitled Inside Chichester Cathedral. Autumn Bridge is by Lee Pratt. This cleverly captured street scene is by Denis Alishev. He calls it Edinburgh at Christmas. Tate Britain Staircase. This elegant architectural study is by Rob Cayley. The next three images are commended. First, a nice civil engineering study. Kevin Harvey shows us Folkestone Harbour Station. Also commended is Inside the Hive, Kew Gardens, by Gerland Lorsch, just full of in-depth detail of the construction. Andy Raven calls this chapel image resting. This was also commended. The first runner-up in this category is this image by Andrzej Jablonski, which he calls Riverside Buildings Reflected. And the second runner-up is George Themelis, 
with birds and buildings. And George is also the winner with Chicago at night. The category Digital, Creative and Imaginative produced 22 images from 12 entrants. The first creative and imaginative image is this Bernese farmhouse, photographed by Stephen O'Neill in infrared with a Nikon 950 twin rig. This fun image is by Gerlind Lorsch. She calls it, Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters? This image of exploding cutlery and crockery is by Andy Raven and is entitled Dynamics of a Place Setting. Reflecting on Port Merion is the title of this imaginative study of the North Wales village from David Starkman. The Fence is by Brian Davis. Pinface is by Kevin Harvey. Terry Turnber calls this picture a subject for 3D. Ellis Island Infrared is by David Kuntz. Neil Crick calls this image Lockdown. It's all up in the air. Harry Atkinson shows us a rainbow tree in the Royal Horticultural Society's Kew Gardens in London. Spooky Spider Nightmare is David Starkman's title for this distinctly scary image. Andy Raven's title for this image is A Healthy Double Helping. This colourful creation from David Starkman is called Alien Visit. Making Rainbows is by David Robinson. This castle near St Moritz was photographed by Stephen O'Neill. The image title is Crap de Sus Castle Infrared. David Starkman calls this image Chevy Dreaming. The next three images were commended. First, this thought-provoking image from David Kuntz he calls Free. Also commended is Crap de Sass Castle, photographed by Stephen O'Neill with a Fuji W3 and infrared filter. This clever image is by Paul Jerram. He calls it Checkmate. Also commended. The first runner-up is Kevin Harvey, who gives us stereo within stereo with this image beam split steamer. The second runner-up is Robert Bloomberg with this image, Anemone Reflected. And Robert Bloomberg is also the winner with this image, Bernie Visits the Kaiser. An image of a masked and mittened Senator Bernie Sanders at the US presidential inauguration went viral with Bernie being inserted into iconic historical photos and classic works of art. This is his first appearance in 3D, visiting the Kaiser Panorama in Berlin, further updated with other COVID-2020 editions. The next set of images is the work of selector Ray Macmillan.
The category Digital Man-Made Objects attracted 48 images from 27 stereographers. And the first image is called In for the Chop. This is Roger Clement's title for this image of a woodcutter's workstation. This picture of Doctor Who TV character Madame Vastra is by Dennis Bursma. Originals, with the S in brackets, is Andy Raven's quirky title for this image. This miniature port was photographed by Brian Dunster at the National Trust's Snows Hill Manor. He calls his image Low Tide. Star Tunnel in Kew Gardens is by Harry Atkinson. This Archbishop Chichely Memorial is in Canterbury Cathedral. Image by Derek Medhurst. Journey is the title of this image by Eddie Kwok. Tony Ford's title for this War of the Worlds tripod is Invasion. It was seen in Woking where the invasion started. This aero engine study made at Stoke Marie's Aircraft Museum is by Reg Self and he titles it So What Went Wrong? That's My Bucket is Bob Taylor's title for this cannibalistic JCB study. Next we have Auction, also by Bob Taylor. Weeping Angel is a Doctor Who TV character. This image is by Dennis Bozma. Give Us a Kiss was taken by Keith Webb at a robot exhibition in London. Keith says, this one just appealed to me. Tumbling Telephone Boxes is by Dana Kubik. Just Ignore It is the title of this image of a Head in Hands carving. Image by Eric Smith. This blue image by Harry Atkinson shows us dark leaves in front of the palm house at RHS Kew Gardens in London. Word Banked is by Girish Patel. The London Book Barge is on the Regent's Canal. Rob Cayley shows us Yellow Steps. Bridge on Rootburn Track, New Zealand is by Paul Feyman. This nice piece of industrial archaeology was photographed by Jack Colbran and is called Ulverston Lockgates. Ian Hastie's title for this image captured in Weymouth Harbour is Classic Old Boat Still Sailing. Dennis Bozma took this picture of Bathammer, the vehicle created by Batman to combat the Freezemobile. Eric Smith calls this image, Just Think About It. Just Frighten It Off is also by Eric Smith. This crustacean sculpture was spotted by Terry Turnber in the forecourt of a Vancouver hotel. Terry says, It's coming to get me. John Savage calls this image Space Shuttle. Old Rope is Rob Cayley's title for this fine collection. Greg Foster's title for this still life composition is Pair of Ducks. Camden Horses are at the Stables Market at Camden Lock. Photograph by Cathy Ford. Artificial Rose Lights is Harry Atkinson's title for this display in front of the Palm House at the RHS Kew Gardens in London. 
a rather bleak view of an industrial area has been well captured by Bob Taylor with his image, Industrial London. Four Liverpool lads out for a stroll is Ian Hastie's title for this image of the Merseyside sculpture of the Beatles. Target, the White House, is by Jeff Ogram. These guns outside the Imperial War Museum both saw action in World War II, one in HMS Ramillies, the other in both HMS Resolution and HMS Roberts. This fine view of the fourth rail bridge was taken from North Queens Ferry by Andrew Bloxham. Come to Mummy is the witty title chosen for this image by David Robinson. Brian Dunster has photographed this Brighton Galloper called Rodney. A nice topical shot from Greg Foster, Compulsory Mask. This view of Powder Mill Trading Post is by Lee Pratt. This wonderful antique emporium is located at Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. Stephen O'Neill's image of this Korean gatehouse sculpture he calls Catch the Ball. Paul Feynman shows us an engineering marvel, the Helix Bridge, Singapore. Keith Webb calls this image from Hampton Court Flower Show, Watch Out! And Keith says, the giant ant looked just like it was about to pounce on the little girl. Stonemason's test piece is by Neil Crick. The next three images were commended. Touching Souls, spelt S-O-U-L-S, is a nice play on words in the title of this image taken at Tewkesbury Abbey by Andrew Bloxham. Also commended was Puff the Magic Dragon. This was photographed by Brian Dunster at Waddesdon Manor during the Christmas opening. Davros, Dark Lord of Scaro, is Dennis Bursma's title for this commended image of the creator of the Dalek race. The first runner-up is Alabaster Canopic Jar Stopper, one of a set of four from the burial of Tutankhamun, imaged by Mike Hilliard. And the second runner-up is Longleat Festival of Light Castle, taken by Kevin Harvey. But the winner of this category is David Kuntz with Fairground Fantasy. Selector Andrew Hurst provided the next set of images. The final category is Digital Natural History. Here, 24 entrants provided 44 images. The first natural history image is this group of marauding gulls captured by Roger Clements. He calls his image, Where Are My Chips? Surprised Squirrel was captured by Jack Colbran. According to Helen Beauville, this Red Admiral butterfly is warming up. 
This is an amethyst deceiver fungus. Image from the camera of Andrzej Jablonski. According to Gerlind Lorsch, beauty lies in the detail. This image of a small tortoiseshell butterfly settled on buddleia blossom in their back garden was captured by Tony Ford. This fisheye view of two fighting gulls is by Susan Pinsky. John Nichols tells us that these ducks are coming into land. This tree in full blossom Girish Patel describes as sprung. Magpie ink cap is Cathy Ford's title for this rather spectacular fungus she found in local woodland. In this close-up, Tony Ford shows us candle snuff fungi. The image was also taken in local woodland. Spot the translucent wings in this contrajour seagull photograph by Susan Pinsky. The title is Gullible's Travels. Maisie's Posy is by Girish Patel. Down the Rabbit Hole is by Girl in Lorch. Looks like there's a big spider's web down there. This Forest Stump caught Mary Paul's eye in a nearby park in Wokingham on an exercise walk in the spring 2020 lockdown. Keith Webb took this image of a Red Admiral in their garden. Keith comments that there seem to be more Red Admirals about than other butterflies. Tony Ford photographed this daffodil in their back garden. This bovine study by Susan Pinsky, she calls Cow Couple. John Nichols shows us a nice packed lunch. Andrew Bloxham photographed this fine display of petunias at the Annick Garden, Annick Castle, Northumberland. Wild Flocks is by Lee Pratt. George Collins saw Edvard Munch's painting The Scream in this sawn tree trunk when out on a Covid exercise bike ride. He returned when he knew that the sunlight would be best. Peace Rose is Cathy Ford's title for this image of a beautiful bloom in their garden. According to David Ford, this bee is homing in. This photograph of a Jew's ear fungus on Eliagnus was taken by Bob Price. Ian Rowett calls this image gliding gull. Imported Flowers is Greg Foster's title for this image of mountain cornflower. This wonderful display of moisture beads is entitled Spider's Web on Burdock. Image by David Ford. Drying and preening is by Helen Beauville. The bird looks like an Australasian darter. Bob Taylor has captured the blooms and buds on this sprig of Berberis. This delightful image of deer was taken by John Nichols at Cannock Chase. The very reasonable title for this fine picture of a toad is Toady, image by Tony Ford. This beautiful close-up of a nasturtium flower is by Bob Price. Robert Bloomberg calls this image sheltered in place. Check out the little mouse just to the left of the small toadstool. 
These are Angel's Bonnet Fungi. Andrei Jablonski is the photographer. Orange Tip on Garlic Mustard is the title of this butterfly study by Bob Price. Andrei Jablonski has captured this image of bay polypore fungi. This striking close-up from Bob Price is entitled Spear Thistle Seed. Young Grey Heron is by Andrei Jablonski. This beautifully captured insect is a stag beetle, spotted by Gerland Lorch in Richmond Park last summer. This image of a pitcher plant is by Derek Medhurst. The next two images were commended. First, Preening Pelicans by Brian Dunster. They were photographed at Cotswold Wildlife Park. This scintillating image of a crabapple flower is from Bob Price, also commended. The first runner-up in the natural history category is Helen Beauville with this image, Curious Quokka. The Quokka, also known as the short-tailed scrub wallaby, is a native of Western Australia. The second runner-up is this gastropodic study by David Kuntz called Ménage à Trois. And Robert Bloomberg is the winner with his picture, Pallid Bat on a Trunk. Each year we select an image which we regard as the standout image over all of the categories. Next, we look back at these overall winners from the past six years. From 2014, we have My Wife by George Thimelis. In 2015, Helen Beauville was the winner with this picture of Dr. Brian May, entitled Red Special. George Thimelis was the winner again in 2016, with this natural history study, Female Cardinal. In 2017, the winner was Roy Ashcroft, with En Route to Blake Rigg. In 2019, Lee Pratt was the winner with Fishing in Colorado. In 2020, George Thimelis was the winner with Hawk. We now recap on the winners from each of the 2021 categories. And now we announce that the overall winner of the Stereoscopic Society Annual Exhibition 2021 is George Thimelis with Pet Fox.